Good afternoon, everyone. And this is Alyssa Corum here. I'm joined by the one and only Mike Webster for the grand finale of our weekend stock market update. And because it's the finale, we're going to go out with a bang, aren't we, Mike? That's how we do it around here, right? Yep, exactly. So let's kick things off. Of course, the purpose of this is to analyze the market. We're looking at different time frames, focusing on the NASDAQ, all to help set you up for the coming week of trade. So we're gonna kick things off with a daily chart of the NASDAQ. And Mike, walk us through your thoughts on the trading action this week. Sure, well, look, it was classic bull market action uh, this week and is really what we've seen this entire bull run since, um, since it started back in you know early April. And of course we hit a bottom on March 23rd. And what's nice about this is you can see that, in fact, I'll blow this up just a little bit, that the days are getting tighter and tighter. Um, you know, imagine, you know, we were back here and there's all this volatility, you know, every day we're up 5%, down 5%, and it's slowly contracted, which is a, a positive sign. It's, it's telling you that the market is more comfortable with this uh, this particular price level. Otherwise, you see that wide and loose type of action. So on its surface, it's very helpful um, that we have some shakeouts in there. The What we saw yesterday coming down here and then having the nice upside reversal, that was constructive. But also, you know, we've held above that 11,000, which is right here. And that was right. your key psychological level. It, it took a little bit of time um, here to kind of move back and forth and to feel that out to make sure that it was, you know, kind of a solid foundation there that it was, you know, and it was able to get through there. It was a ceiling before, now it's our floor. And so that's a key level that we'll be looking at towards the end of um, the show. And, and of course, we're well above our 21 day moving average. So it's um, mm -hmm. picture perfect. All right, well, let's zoom in on this picture then, why don't we? Flipping over to TradeStation to take a look at the candlesticks. And Mike, why do you like focusing on the, the candlesticks so much? What, what do they give you? Yeah, so it gives you so much more information. So the, you wanna look at both views because the other view that we just looked at uh, that we have in our institutional products around MarketSmith, that's a high, high, low and close. And those are very clean charts and you want to have access to clean charts. But with a candlestick, what it's doing is it's giving you one other piece of information. It's giving you what the open is. And so you can see the relationship in there. And let's blow this up. That was the same kind of time frame we were looking at. We're mm -hmm. going to blow this up to really get into this week. Uh, and what you can do is you can, you have this information that like, for example, on Thursday, that you opened here and you closed here because our, our bar is is blue. And so that's saying, you know, I call that a positive or everyone calls that a positive body or a positive bar. And then this one, you can tell that uh, on Wednesday, you opened here and you closed there. That's not what you want to see. And that's obviously why it has a negative color associated with it. Well, pink is not really negative. <laughs> Right, <laughs> blue and pink. I didn't, well, I didn't realize that these are boy and girl colors. I, I could, uh, it's, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. We'll, you okay we'll take, with that? It's, I'm, I'm totally cool with that. It's fine. Okay, I should do a politically correct version of this and flip them. But look, my eyes are used to it this way. So this was our, our week where we had very constructive action, where you had nice positive bodies, and what you want to see are, you know, if you're going to have a long wick you want it on the bottom like we had had back here even though that was a negative body because that's your your shakeout you you've gone below um earlier in the day and by the close the really important time of the day uh, then you you're traveling back up so you can tell that you know on this day for example uh, you opened here you traveled all the way down here but the momentum throughout the day pushed you back up to close here and you have these tiny little wicks on top so this was the only really negative day um, mm -hmm. during the week and that's fine. You don't want it to get um, carried away. You don't want to see too much euphoria. And the way we closed here with, um, you know, kind of the same size uh, wicks on the top and the bottom, um, that's, you know, that's fine. Your body was, is positive and, um, you know, obviously, you know, closing well above where we were on Thursday. And you can see that the body didn't really get too much into Thursday's action. So 
as I said before, that's picture perfect. Your expectation at this point, looking at this information is you're continuing that trend and moving higher. So this being over here on Monday is what your expectation is. That doesn't mean that that's what happens, but you always want to know what to expect. Yes, that's so true. And adding in another layer of information, we have Webby's RSI. So we're going to pull that up. And Webby's RSI is measuring the lows, uh, the percentage between the lows and the 21-day exponential moving average. And RSI, it's your really simple indicator uh, that you've named it. And I, I do just also want to mention, because we've had people ask questions, oh, how, how can I get this? And uh, John Muchow, right, on, on mm -hmm. Twitter has, has helped out with um, this in terms of, of getting it on TD Ameritrade, I believe. Yeah, so if, if you go on to, I think it's just uh, his name um, as far as Twitter um, and, and search for it. And he's put the code out there and he's probably one of the nicest guys out in the, in, in the community and is always helping. He's a, fa uh, a family member of the SMU because he always used to uh, mark up the um, some interday charts and things and put it out on Twitter. So if you haven't seen his stuff, go to it. And he also has a website out there where he's taken all of my old, um, that used to be called uh, What Would Webby Do? Uh, that was uh, prior to um, the SMU. And he's uh, put them all together just on a, a website so you can go back and read them. And I started a late, um, I think it was in mid-December, um, is when I started writing this weekend thing. And I suggest that you go back and, and I always had this mm -hmm. as an educational piece that happened to be about the current market. So people would read it, but really it's, it's meant to teach you how to fish without mm -hmm. hooks. That's for you. Yeah, Marie. of course. Um, okay. So with <laughs> this, uh, we have the two areas where you want to stay between, and that's uh, the half a percent and, and 2%. And all that means is, that your low is not too far above your 21 day. You don't want it to get too excessive. Now it's okay to be up there for a little bit, but you want it to trend kind of more in that sweet spot, which is uh, down here. So it's gotten a little bit overheated at, at, um, on Friday. So it's up at 2.65. So it's a little bit more than we would prefer, but it's not the end of the world. Our 10 day moving average is back below this um, area right now. And, and so it's healthy. You just don't want to see euphoric moves. And, and I suggest that you, you go out and, and you dump this into um, either, you know, I use TradeStation um, or Thinkorswim like John has, has put out there. So um, I think it looks good, but it's a little bit, uh, just a little bit too hot, um, but that's okay. We certainly don't want to see it get up in this mm -hmm. area, uh, up yeah. at 4%. At that would be a little spooky. So a bit of a yellow flag there with Webby's RSI. And just one of the many ways that your spirit is living on uh, in, in the IBD community. And <laughs> now, it. yeah, we're going to take a step back like we like to do also and look at the NASDAQ on a weekly chart to see if there are any hidden clues there. Well, I want to see if you've been paying attention. Now, where is the take a step back from? I'm giving you one little hint. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, oh, I put you on oh, the your spot. Shirt, your shirt, your shirt, Grateful Okay, Dead. yeah, from there Bob Weir. So what they used to do is at concerts, <laughs> things would get, you know, really up in there. And so we would have people take a step back. And, and again, that's just being kind to uh, to people out there. And, and, you know, as a footnote, so look, as I said, what are you gonna do, fire me at this point if I go off on a tangent? I don't think so. Um, that um, Guns N' Roses used to do that too. Um, yeah. And they, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't keep on singing because you know, at concerts, it can get pretty rough. So it does. back to the show, yes. don't get me off on tangents. I, yeah, you're right. I think the audience likes the tangents though. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get the webby tangents while we still can. Okay, so when you're looking at a weekly, um, it's helpful to look at it on the bar chart, but right now we're, we're also looking at it on the candle, and you're trying to get a sense of, is it normal? That's, <laughs> every chart is always, is it normal or abnormal? Um, and this is normal. This looks like everything else that we've, we've had. Once it starts looking different, let me, that was probably a little too much. Once it starts looking different, you're on the lookout and saying, oh no, you know, different is not good. And this bar, what I mean by it looks the same is, you know, take a look at the bar. This body um, is pretty much, it's, uh, the candle is just the full body, meaning we started at the lows, 
um, opened at the lows on Monday and closed uh, near the highs on Friday. It doesn't get better. And look, that looks just like this week, this mm -hmm. week, this week, this week, and pretty much this week. So, um, and a little bit like this week. That's what you want to see. You want to be able to say, oh, this we've had this happen before. That's just the character of the market and, and very key and very important to stay within character. Yes, it is. And now we're going to switch on over back to a daily of the NASDAQ and look at the regression lines that we've been doing. And um, then we'll get into, because uh, you did hint at something exciting for the audience. So, so we'll get to an exciting historical precedent. But first, update us on these regression lines on the current NASDAQ daily chart. Thank you. So um, yeah, we will get to that in a second. So what we've done here is we've made this a little bit cleaner. I took away the um, full standard deviation um, on, on either side just to focus in on the half standard deviation above and a half standard deviation below this regression line that started uh, right back here on the Tom Petty follow through day, um, April 6th. And I'm doing the regression all the way out to um, today's date, so April 21st. That is key, and we're going to circle back to that in, in a second. Um, so what's happened here is we've just, we bounced off of it over here, uh, came close to it over here, and we're smack dab in the middle of this regression line. That is telling you everything is fine. Um, you did, right now, as of Friday, everything is fine. You, all, you, you always have to be flexible because any, anything can happen on Monday but mm -hmm. it's right just touching this line. And so your expectation is for it to stay like it's been, uh, really close to this line. Once it starts getting way above or way below, that's when the character is starting to change and why you have to uh, be on guard. So what I would suggest that anyone who is doing this regression line, and you can do it on in most software tools, and it's something that in the future, we're gonna bring to MarketSmith once we uh, do a lot of backend work, or once they do, I'm not gonna be doing it. Yeah. Um, so, but I will help out if they call. So the, um, the key is to stop it here, because if you continue uh, using that end date as your regression, um, all those data points are going to be in there and it's just going to keep getting wider and wider and wider. So I'd say that you lock it into place um, using uh, today's date, or you can even go back a month and, and lock it in there. So it's just using the data from April 6th to right now to here, but you could even, you know, stop it somewhere around here. And it is an art. Um, you here know, being for, for those at home who can't see the date. Oh, um, hold on, I will go like right back. So I would say that ago. like, the, yeah, you could go like right here was um, July 10th. So you could stop it there or even uh, July 14th after you had your, your move up and then your move back down. Um, so right in there is where you could stop it. Like I said, I this particular line, um, I'm using today's date, uh, April 21st um, as you're stopping. Oh my God. I don't. I. Why does it? Time is long by since I don't April. Even, I don't even know what month it is. <laughs> Loser. Huh? No. Time is time has flown by, and the market has changed so much this year. It's been pretty incredible. Um. So we're gonna use what you just talked about about locking in the regression line. Take a step back in time and look at a historical precedent on Wanda. We're gonna do a change date and go back to the end of 1980 and what was happening on the NASDAQ uh, at that time. Yeah, so um, here we have, like you said, December 31st, 1980. And this was the market that was very similar to um, you know, what we just went through. And you can see that, um, let's see, this was down 25% in that short period of time. And then it ended up trending nicely above your 21 day the entire time until things started changing around over here and then it became a different market. So what we're gonna do is go over and do a regression during this time frame. And the key date that we're going to be using here is the uh, April 24th, uh, because that looks very similar to the April 6th um, uh, follow through day. This is not a follow through day, but this is the day that you powered above the 21 day. Um, mm -hmm. moving average, which is what happened on April 6th of, of this year. So we are going to um, go back over. And yes, it has the spirit of, spirit of the follow-through day. 
it's all about the spirit, right? Yeah, the we spirit, love the spirit of it. To, yeah, to help this, guide us for uh, what we might be seeing right now. There is a spirit in the sky somewhere. So we are starting this. What was the date that I was using? Um, I wrote it down. April, yeah, April 24th, 1980. And then I locked it in on August 29th, 1980. So I locked that into place right there. Um, so it's starting here and ending there. And these are the same regression lines that, that we saw in the other one, a half, half above, half below. And let's blow this up because it's amazing how similar uh, this time frame looks. So let me see. It didn't blow up the way I wanted it to. Okay. So right here, it started looking different. Right, so that was September 16th, September 18th, this area in here where it was no longer hugging the line and it started really kind of accelerating as kind of an inflection point there. You would not be selling into that because at that point you don't have enough information. You, whenever you're looking at a historical chart, it is the most important thing you can do is to pretend like this is all the information you have. Sure, we know that it falls apart two weeks later, but if you uh, play, if you don't, act as if this is the only information you have, uh, historical charts are actually going to make your trading worse. So put yourself in this mindset. It's up there. It's nearing, nearing this line. And you're saying, okay, I'm not selling, but I'm on the, I'm on the lookout that, you know, the first little, you know, glitch that happens, I'm going to start selling and start putting on the brakes because this is different. Now it could have just continued higher, but it didn't. And it came, so right, uh, came uh, straight down. And right around here is when you're going to start getting very defensive very quickly. There are times to be fast and there are times to be just kind of, we talked before about you have the gas pedal and you have your brake and sometimes you're just in neutral coasting. Mm -hmm. When uh, at this point you'd want to be putting on your brake and then sitting back and waiting to see, you know, um, what comes your way. Now down here it undercuts. So this is your, your first break of any of the standard deviations. So that is your first sign that, hey, things are probably different um, now. And it comes back up to that line and just can't, um, you know, can't get back into phase. It, right here on October 24th, that's when the character has changed for sure. Over here, you're not sure. Maybe it's just coming back in. It's looking nice, you know, hugging the, the regression line, but then it's broken. And at that point, you take your regression line and do you know what you do with it? What do you do with it? You put it in. You the lock trash. it in? No, you put, you it, put in it in the trash, it in trash because it's no longer helpful for you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a, it, and that's what you have to do with, with certain indicators. You use mm -hmm. them, you, you use certain tools when they make sense. And then when they stop making sense, you get rid of them. And um, so look at yeah, what happens. All goes here. back to being flexible. Like, like what? Does somebody have a nickname? <laughs> well, your uh, new nickname for, t I guess, today only, I dubbed you Gumby. So yeah. I'll yeah. take I'll take the Eddie Murphy Gumby anytime. Um, so look, this is what happened afterwards. Things completely um, changed, and even though you know it went back up over here, it was a completely different market. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing that it, this is the most logical uh, thing to happen. That at some point we'll start breaking it. You take it, you you dump it in the trash, and you move on, and then you you do the rest of your um, analysis and, and and just you know be flexible. Yes, and I think we wanted to hop back now to Wanda again and yeah. look at and look at 1980. Yeah, let me share that with you. Just one second. All righty. And so I'm going to go out to 1981, just so you can get a sense for this on a chart that you're familiar with. The the other one, uh, Trade Station, didn't have the high, low, and close back then, so we had to use a line chart. So you can see it just mm -hmm. completely changed character. Let's look at it on a weekly. And we're going to go out, this is going to be the last thing that we do here, and go out to 1990, um, and we're going to do it on a monthly chart. So you can see this, even though this was a major bull market during that time, it, they don't go straight up. And so you don't ever want to just say, oh, we're in a major bull market. I'm just going to keep the gas down um, all the time. This was the time frame that we were looking at. This is the end of 1980 right there. And notice all these jagged moves in here. Now, of course, the S&P 
uh, at that time um, was, was a lot tamer, but still you had people think back to the 80s and the 90s, and, oh, that was just the heyday and you could just make money hand over fist and it was just easy. No, if you've studied that time frame or you traded that time frame, it, you know, it wasn't like that. You still needed to be in phase um, with the market and, and always doing your own SMU every weekend which is the homework for everyone. I want you to actually sit down and think through and think what would Webby do and go through and do your analysis and maybe even take some notes, maybe um, send them via Twitter to Allie and you know, keep her busy so she can send back these great gifts. I think that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna keep the spirit of this alive on IBD Live every morning. So uh, make sure you do send in those questions. We, we would love, love to have that interaction and, and have this, the spirit of the SMU continue. And, then and I love that idea that, you, that, that Chris, sorry, that, yeah. that Chris had of, and you of just taking this and, and just morphing it into your own thing and you'll figure out what works and what doesn't. I, yeah. The spirit of the SMU is always changing. Yes, it'll it'll likely evolve, but uh, this will be the rebirth. or are continuing, continuing it uh, in your memory, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, so, me. yeah. Speaking of staying in phase with the market, a very important chart to also look at for your battle plan every week is looking at the various levels. So, if we could pull that chart up, and if you could walk us through some of the different scenarios that um, investors need to be keeping in mind. Well, um, this is the most important part. And I just would like to welcome everyone who just fast forwarded to this part. We did a lot of fun, <laughs> cool stuff. You, you're welcome to rewind. It's okay. Um, you won't hurt my feelings. So uh, look, you always want to do this with your positions as well as the market. You want to have your levels and this is your battle plan. It's best to do it over the weekend. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Typically on a Sunday is the best time to do this because your brain has had a, a chance to really kind of rest on Saturday. You come back, you're fresh on a, on a Sunday. And that's how Bill used to do it with, with his work. And, and religiously for about 15 years, you know, I'd call him every Sunday night and, and we would go over the market. We would go over, um, you know, individual stocks that I bring to him. And then, you know, after he got to trust me, he would share charts with me and, and, and I'd give my two cents, which was um, really a blast. And uh, it really was helpful. It's something that he had done, started doing in the sixties before I was born. It's just a ritual of Sunday night. He'd talk to a couple of people he respected and they go through things. So you might want to join an IBD meetup group or um, find some friends on Twitter or something. I'm sure Allie could point you in the right direction there. Um, so it's a long winded way of saying this is important stuff. Yeah. Do it. So let's get into the nitty gritty and we're going to blow this up and look at these and then we'll step back in a, in a little bit. So what we have on here, uh, these are not the regression lines. The, the blue one, that's the old channel line that we were using. Um, the white one is uh, just parallel with that. And then the red one was the top line um, it, as far as the, the upper channel line. So that's one concern is we're getting um, close to that. And that's why I put this 11,400 up, up mm -hmm. here of just saying that if we get up to there, that's where it would be crossing you know, approximately where it would be crossing that line. You see that it, it happened over here. That was on, uh, what's the date there? Um, April, that can't be, uh, what does that say? August. Oh, August 6th, Six? okay. Man, my eyes are playing tricks on me. And then July 21st <laughs> over there. So um, with that said, it happened a couple of times and then came back in. So if it gets up there using this line, um, you would be on the lookout, not necessarily selling, but you certainly wouldn't be, you know, putting on the gas heavy there. The next thing is um, just this line here, the 11,124, uh, which just was your old high. Oops, I just moved a, a line that I did not want to move. Let me put that back. Um, so this was just your old high from, from this area. And you're always just paying attention to that. That's not really a line in the sand. It's more just as a reference point of, okay, this is where we move back above. At some mm -hmm. point, we want that to become a floor. If it hits that, right. you're, not, you're not selling. Now, 
right over here, this is where your next line would be because that is where you got support. Um, so that is an important level. But before you get there is our key, that's our 21 day moving average, yes. which is blue line at 10,945. That needs to hold because uh, most markets respect the 21 day moving average and this market really respects it. So once that changes and it, if it goes under there and it starts living under there, you really change your game plan and you start becoming cautious and uh, you're just you know saving your bullets for another day. Another key area um, on here is this yellow line and that's just uh, associated with your 50 day moving average. Um, every stock can always come in and into the 50 day and every market could come into the 50 day. So you just want to be aware that it's healthy and, and it's fine, but you're going to lose a lot of money uh, from here to here if it comes down there. So don't wait until it hits it to start taking um, action. As we start coming in, you know, you're, you're taking your foot off the gas, you're tapping your brakes. And what does that really translate to? You rate your stocks A through C. And as you start coming down, your C quality stocks, you know, those you start pairing back or maybe even eliminating. And then other ones, if you're down on something, if you're down on it more than 5% and the market's weak, just blow it out then. You don't have to wait for the seven or 8% and that'll raise some, some right. cash for you. And if you're still too heavy, um, what you can do is, uh, you know, just across the board sell is something I like to do that unless I have an A plus stock, I'm taking all my other stocks and just selling five or 10% of everything across the board. It's an easy way to ease off on the pressure there. And our final, um, you know, line that is relatively close is um, down here. Let me zoom back out on here. And so I was just using the low, Oops, I keep on moving these lines and I'm really upset. Good thing I have them saved <laughs> elsewhere. Um, oh wait, we're not doing this again. So let's see, 714, it's the low there. And that was the last time we, that was a brutal, big up day, big down day. We got support and you don't wanna be, you don't wanna break through that because then you're on your way as a magnet down to your 200 day. And this is your area that you will get killed in. So don't sit through this unless you have big cost basis and it's an A or an A plus stock, um, that's the time where you get chopped up. Then when, and we're gonna do that, at some point we're gonna get to there, you just wanna be lighter so your ammo is ready um, and you're, that's the time to do a ton of research and, and search for stocks, uh, use MarketSmith, do your screening, build your watch list, use the Growth 250, listen to the guys and girls on, on the best show in the world, IBD Live, they will point you in the right direction. Um, so, but you don't want to be trapped in uh, down there because you'll be losing your shirt, even a Grateful Dead shirt, you'll be losing yeah. it. Or what's it. What do you've got rocking over there? I've got my ACDC shirt on in honor of you. It's my only, oh. you know, rock and roll type type shirt I have, but so with it, all this information that we have, that's, that's the big picture, all the different scenarios, but where we stand today. So with all of that, how are you feeling about heading into next week? Because, uh, you know, we looked at the weekly bars and it, there wasn't anything abnormal there. The Webby's RSI that may have been a little bit of a yellow flag, but what, kind of posture are you taking heading into next week? Um, you know, uh, aggressive. Look, on TV, you always hear the people say, that, you know, they're cautiously optimistic or some nonsense like that. Look, the reality is we're in a bull market. If you go back and read Livermore's book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, that's the key thing is to know what type of market environment you're in. Is it spooky? Yeah, it's really spooky because we're kind of, we feel like we're in nosebleed. Uh, nosebleed territory, but we've been doing this for a while. So I just have the S&P 500 up because it just made me think that, we, um, you know, we should discuss it. It did go into new high ground, which is mm -hmm. something that we've been talking about when it broke out of this kind of flat base here, or you can call it a cup with handle is the way I like to look at it. And it's done exactly what you um, would have thought that it was going to do. It trended up nicely. And on Thursday, we had that nice little shakeout. So your your current expectation is now for this to be a magnet to 3,500. Now, 
the S&P does not run at the same speed, or we'll look at it on the spiders because people are used to that. So to um, 350, it feels like it's a magnet for that level. Now at the same time, things like the Russell 2000, I'm really not participating. That's still within character. Um, something like the mid caps, that's not participating. But what is are the, the, the large cap NASDAQ stocks. And that's where you know all the leadership is. Uh, keep an eye out on those, you know, things like uh, Apple and Amazon and Microsoft and Google and, you know, all the big cap ones. Watch those like a hawk because once you start seeing some cracks there, that's when you want to start getting worried. Now, a uh, one-off here or there on, on bad news, you know, Facebook had some, um, some negative news yesterday and it just completely shook it off. That's telling you that it's, you know, strong action when you can see negative news come in and things still move higher, uh, that's a sign that you're still in a very, very strong uh, bull market. That does not mean that you get carried away and buy things extended. You still have to be careful. Um, always know your exit on each stock and try to keep, you know, we talked about on, on IBD Live today, and I would suggest that um, if you don't have a subscription that you get one, it's the, it's the cheapest thing out there for what it is. I can't believe that we do it at that price. It should be 10 times that much and it would still be underpriced. And, and it's a solid team of people. And go back and, and, and watch the, the, the shows. And we, we talk about, like, for example, today we talked about with Swing Trader that, um, you know, I've done with, with Justin, um, who's one of the smartest guys out there, that we try to keep our things within 1% of an ideal uh, buy point. And then with leaderboard, the, the one that we do with, you know, with Chris and Justin and, and Ken and Dave and Juan, you know, a solid team, those will, you know, go out to maybe 5% because that's more of a traditional uh, position trade. You don't want to buy anything past that, past 5% from a pivot. But the closer you get to the pivot, uh, the better. So don't get carried away, but it's still, it's gas pedal time. But um, you're always on the lookout. You never know what Washington can um, throw our way. The sooner we get to the election, you know, the, the market will tell you what it thinks um, the outcome is going to be. And the market is typically right. Yeah. And we will be uh, on a very close watch on the edge of our, our seats every morning on IBD Live, being flexible and updating our stance on the market as necessary. But until then, we're following the trend. And you know what I think is so amazing is, um, you know, throughout your time with us uh, in the IBD newsroom, the market has gone through a very extreme conditions. You yeah. Know? So, so we've kind of seen a, a little bit of everything, which is, which is mm -hmm. pretty cool in a sense uh, that, you know, you've, you along with the rest of the team have really helped our audience know what to do in you know pretty much anything the market can throw at us yeah so with that in mind um you can go back like we talked about go on john's site and read my um wwds the the what came before the smu for those of you who didn't watch the entire show i know who you are and i know where you live trust me i'm <laughs> coming for you um, and I, I talked at, in detail about the, the top in February, and I went through the, the reasoning uh, why um, you should be um, writing a certain plan called a, a right now plan, um, just a nod to Sammy Hagar and the boys. And it's, it's very important, and it's a game plan. And so go back and read those. They're unedited, so I didn't have Chris and Justin to fix my typos, so I can't spell. I don't write well. They always fix all those things. If you don't, oh, they said you. They said you're a good writer. Yeah. Uh, uh, aside, <laughs> aside from the spelling, so, maybe. Yeah, lots of spelling. So, anyways, go back and read those, please, because you know it walks you through how to get out. Um, you know, with Swing Trader, Justin and I, we're, we were out in, in you know in the crash, and that's what you want to be. And Bill O'Neill, back in 1987, him and his team. They were out, um, you know, before the 1987 crash. And when I was on the, the PM team, you know, in March of 2000, um, all of us got out of the market too uh, back then because we were just following rules and following the market. And Bill didn't tell us what to do. And we did the same thing in, in 2007 and got out there. The system 
that Bill created that we all kind of just add our little bits to uh, really works and you need to stay in phase with the market. So go back and please spend the time to read those, maybe one a week or, or so. Watch IBD Live. Uh, like I said, the best TV show out there. And in case I don't get a chance to say it, please be kind to everybody. And um, if you're in Austin, come by. Maybe I'll be hanging out at the statue behind me. That's Stevie yeah. Ray. And, you know, um, we can take pics. Exactly. Well, this whole uh, episode, uh, this finale episode has been sprinkled with your, uh, you know, nuggets of wisdom throughout the whole way. But in closing, if you could just give us, give us a couple of words to, uh, you know, give to our, our audience some closing advice, I guess, I guess I should say. What well, should they be keeping in mind as, as traders? What's, you know, the look, core important things to think about? Okay, you need to be flexible. That is the most important part. And realize you're gonna make mistakes every single day. It could be simply that you missed an opportunity to buy something. There were several things that, that I missed today. Be honest with yourself because you wanna learn each day and you want your mistakes to get smaller and smaller and smaller, but own them and um, really look inward because that's how you're going to get better. And if anyone, you know, thinks that they, they don't make mistakes, they, they need some therapy because Bill would make mistakes and there's nobody better than him and he would make mistakes all the time and he would just learn from them. So mm -hmm. that's the best thing that you can do. Um, and don't be too hard on yourself either because, uh, you know, trading is supposed to be fun. You know, you could put your money with a, you know, with a hedge fund or a, um, a you know mutual fund or just in the spiders or the queues or something, but you don't want to do that. This is fun. This is a skill you know uh, to do and, and to spend time um, searching and, and having fun with it. And, and I, I would suggest getting um, reaching out and having other people to help. So an IBD meetup is, is a great thing. Uh, the, I think uh, Chris Gessel's uh, idea for IBD Live is the best thing that the firm has come out with since Bill's original books back in the, you know, um, God, maybe the 60s now. Um, so, you know, use that. It's the best thing out there. It's like a dollar a day or something silly like that. It's ridiculously cheap. And if you're not getting it, you need to get it. And look, trust me, I didn't get paid for it. And am I getting paid now? <laughs> I believe it, you know, and, 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 it's, a, and it's a great uh, team and I'm going to miss everybody. Um, please say hi on Twitter. I can't talk about the stock market anymore or, or stocks, but I'll be happy to share with you um, great uh, YouTube videos of great music. Yeah, and uh, we do want to thank you once again for all of your contributions. Our community is so grateful for you and just because this chapter is closing and you're starting another one doesn't mean that it's goodbye forever. It's a see you later. And even though you'll be gone, you definitely won't be forgotten. And we will continue. If you make me cry. <laughs> <off mic. laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm capable of that. But we do wish you the best of luck in your next venture. We're so happy for you. And Thanks again. Once again, yeah, it's it's not a goodbye. It's just a see you I'll, later. I'll, Webby. I'll catch you later. Sounds good. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. And you can catch us on IBD Live Monday morning over at investors.com slash IBD Live.